listen to me this is how listen let me tell you something before you dominate any industry or take over any city any territory god sends out vibes that's what we call sponsoring rumors on your behalf and see these vibes listen these vibes when they go out about your product about you as a person about your services they begin to change the body language of the territory towards you the body language of that industry towards you this is very important no man takes over any city until the body language of the city is changed towards them this is how god changes the body language of the territory towards you somebody comes to a city to do ministry and he has labored and labored for years and it's as though the city is not open to him not necessarily because they are not anointed not necessarily because they don't have the word there's such a thing as the body language of the city towards you the moment the body language of the city and that industry changes hi, 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 hi. it has nothing listen let me tell you something when these things open eh? hi, hi. Malaka Posoto. to you to be like ah is this not what i've been doing you will say a simple phrase i've always been saying everybody shouting hey, ah, see a word See, I was saying this thing from university days. Oh. They just see your brain say, see packaging. Ah, see, see delivery. See. And you're wondering, ah, is this not what I've been presenting? The body language has changed. The body language has changed. In the place of prayer, fasting, and giving, listen, we change the body language of a territory towards us. Listen to me, I'm giving you how to dominate in 2019. In the place of prayer, fasting, and crazy giving, you change the body language of that industry towards you. You heard the last time, you know, you know, um, Mr. Femi. Right, you remember Mr. Femi, the banker who came for the marketplace. You know, there's a side that maybe when next he comes in a group, I would like him to share. You see, he told you that in the board of directors in that Pan African bank at the point, he was the youngest, and he always wondered what he was doing there. I knew him when he started. Okay, ah, Sam is here. We knew him then, we we're maybe like 100 level when he started. Glory to God. Pew, he was at the top, selected as one of the trees to be future MDs future CEOs of the bank a major tool is this giving combined with prayer and fasting suddenly the body language <laughs> the body language of the entire institution was changed towards him. hallelujah is somebody listening to me this morning understanding of truth comes with responsibility because you now know what to do that's why ignorant christianity makes god solely responsible and we call it irresponsible christianity the wait completely on god to do what he wants to do not listening for what am i supposed to engage in jesus don't forget that jesus went somewhere to return <laughs> we read that he returned in the power of the spirit into the circle of the hidden and his fame was noise abroad his vibes was noise abroad suddenly everybody wanted to hear him he went somewhere and returned the Bible said he was driven of the spirit into the wilderness to do what? to fast and pray because according to the Bible there is no fasting without prayer that's charismatic affliction. God doesn't sponsor that. All through the Bible, fasting was always combined with praying and giving. So we'll get into that. And helping out. And having fellowship with God. Or having and uh, making your request known. Those who did 40 days and 49 had time of fellowship, time of receiving direction from God, and times of empowerment. Moses was in the presence of God 40 days and 40 nights without food to receive 10 commandments. Is it not just 10 sentences? Does it take 40 days to write it? Fellowship. How did I know? His, his statement shows us his mindset. To the children of Israel, it was law. 
But to Moses, it was his life. It was his life. It was his life. It wasn't about God writing ten sentences. There was a fellowship. There was a fellowship. Elijah, the same thing. Jesus, the same thing. Hallelujah. So he went somewhere and returned in the power of the Spirit. And his vibe, his vibes was everywhere. Hallelujah. Is somebody getting blessed this morning? So we'll just take them one by one. We'll handle prayer today. We'll handle prayer today. As part of the threefold call for dominating the air. We'll handle prayer today. There are many things to say about prayer, isn't it? <laughs> All right, we've already established that prayer is not a boring, fruitless religious exercise. Though sometimes, you need to write this down, sometimes prayer must start as a decision. Continue as a discipline until it becomes a delight. You can write that down. Starts as a decision. Sometimes you decide to pray. You decide to pray about your year. You decide to pray for um, um, a new experience in 2019. You decide as a decision. Amen. You decide that your children, your family, your, 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 your spiritual life, your work with God, your finances has to go in another direction. So you decide to pray. Amen. So it starts a decision. I have to add that second part because sometimes even after you have decided to pray, <laughs> there must be discipline to continue. <laughs> because listen, prayer, prayer, I'm, I'm hoping not to go ahead of myself. Prayer is not God, you have seen all you have seen. Help me, Lord. You know I need help. Your word say you help me. Help me, Lord. Jalababa, jalababa. In Jesus' name, Amen. You go. No, no, no. You can't maximize prayer like that. So a lot of people now think prayer is the 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 the, the, the pattern is like this: intercession, then intervention. No. Most times it's intercession, instruction, then intervention. The three eyes. So intercession, instruction. Now instruction, I just use the general word. It's it actually means the light breaking on you. And listen, that light breaking on you sometimes will take time. And it also has to do with what you are praying for, who you are praying for. If you are praying for something personal, it's easier and faster. If you are praying for something that has to do with the will of others involving. You want the government to give you the contract, the will of the chief of staff and the governor is involved. So it's going to take a longer time to bend. Are you listening to me now? So it's not really about, about what God wants to do and what he doesn't want to give. No. It's about you being positioned to lay hold on what is available. On what is available. It continues as a discipline until it becomes a delight. Amen. I've said it here again and again that prayer is a major generator of the infrastructures for progress. Major generator of infrastructures for progress. The basic foundation for prayers I just want to highlight, then we'll share on the five five things prayer was designed for. All right, then we'll close. Basic foundations for prayers. Number one, our revelation of God. I have to mention that again, our revelation of God. So we are not going to a God who is unwilling. We are not trying to overcome the unwillingness of God. Whatever you are praying for, know that God already did something before you came to pray about it. The gap is that you are in the flesh and you are on earth. And that's what your persistence does. Amen. I said amen all right so um, our revelation of god that god is a loving father god is always willing and able and god is faithful paul says god is faithful by whom we are called unto the fellowship of his son jesus christ number two our understanding of the covenant basic foundations i said number one our revelation of god number two our understanding of the covenant knowing that god is bound by blood to hear and answer you listen <laughs> 
<laughs> you know that is that sounds braggadocious right but it's true god is bound by blood covenant Aye. listen to me there's blood between us and god never forget that no matter how helpless we look no matter how imperfect the church looks i tell people there's blood between the church and god all he requires is for us to open our mouth he's bound by that blood covenant to answer he didn't waste the blood of his precious son no no he didn't when we ask in first john chapter 5 verse 14 he says when we ask anything according to his will according to his will his will there doesn't mean if it's his will to give you what you're asking for you'll be mistaken he's talking about according to his will for asking and we ask in faith we ask in the name of his holy son jesus it's some of the year you must understand that you must think covenants when you pray you must think covenant when you pray that was the difference between david and the um the the other army of israelites at the valley at the context with goliath and the philistines the others came there looking at the size of goliath and looking at the ability to bring down goliath again that was the difference between joshua and caleb and the other elders that were sent out to spy the land the others were looking at the giants joshua and caleb were looking at the covenant this year don't look at the giants and don't look at your human abilities these two scenarios you see that the focus of the people was one the giants to their own ability the land is flowing with milk and honey but there are giants there and the land consumes its inhabitants that's a lie if it consumes its inhabitants how come you saw people there <laughs> hi my name is Karis E. Amerov what's your idea of church on Sunday morning you know when we say these many things go through many minds well here is the truth the local church is god's idea and by the local church i mean the body of believers in a particular location with a common vision reaching their community with the love of god you see church ought to be a place where dreams are ignited and potentials powered to fulfillment church ought to be a place where we gather around god's word around god's name with shouts of joy and victory i want to invite you to a very special church in the city of joss it's called the embassy of heaven glory zone church if you live around the city of joss or the environs this is a church for you we have two services every sunday morning the first service is 8 a.m second service is 9 45 a.m the address is on the screen it's a place where the word of god is taught with accuracy and depth a place where the presence of god is experienced without doubt is a place surely for your friends for your family we look forward to having you around every sunday as you have fellowship with us remember first service is 8 a.m and second service is 9 45 a.m sunday morning see you around god bless you don't look at the giants this year and don't look at your human ability don't look at your humanity no don't look at what you can do and what your bank account can do don't look at the family you came from look at the covenant david came and says who is this uncircumcised philistine define the armies of the living god who is this uncircumcised philistine circumcision the seal of the covenant showing us where his eyes were understanding of the covenant god is bound by blood number three foundation our stand on god's word our stand on god's word. foundation for prayer as we pray and fast this month you stand on god's word you see we're, we're praying within the confines of his words you, of his word you are not trying to um to make him do something he has not revealed do you understand you are not turning to him hoping no Hosea said 14 verse 2 I believe say take with two words and turn to the Lord 
take with you words and talk turn, turn to the lord the most effective prayer is praying the word when you pray scriptures it's super effective when you pray scripture oh lord you see what i'm going through they are asking where is my god oh lord what have i done to you you are complaining you are not praying oh lord when will it be my turn when will it be my turn lord will he ever come to my turn oh lord but lord you told me you're a good god what is happening to me he's still a good god he has not changed what am i saying you are not the call to prayer is not a call to complain is the call to present your strong point see prayer is like going to court and you must be a good lawyer oh shalavaya those who have results listen in the place of prayer are good lawyers because prayer is like going to court you are appearing before the supreme court of the universe and appearing before the judge of all presenting your constitution what you go according to the constitution my lord this is what it says i'm supposed to have my children according to the constitution is somebody here i am supposed to prosper according to the constitution you must be a good lawyer what do good lawyers do they gather content from the constitutions you don't stand before the judge and tell him what you feel no you quote the constitution is somebody here this morning you quote the constitution this is how lawyers win cases this is how we win in prayer so imagine a lawyer who doesn't know the constitution. Ah, they will finish him in court. They will finish him in court. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Presenting your strong point. The world is a guideline. Hallelujah. All right, five things prayer was designed for. If I can do two, and we'll pray and we'll prophesy, I go five things prayer was designed for number one prayer was designed for communication and fellowship with god you can write it down fellowship means sharing together fellowship is the cream of every relationship and it's a platform through which god can rub off on you <laughs> you know jesus came and called him father the others knew him as god to abraham he revealed himself as jehovah you remember to Moses, he re- sorry, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he revealed himself as El Shaddai. To Moses, he revealed himself as Jehovah. He says, he told Moses in Exodus chapter 6, he said, um, I, I revealed myself to your fathers as El Shaddai, but by my name, Jehovah, was I not known to them. He says, I am Jehovah. And then Jesus came and gave us a higher revelation. It says my father that dwelleth in me he doeth the works he called him father now the very word father presupposes a relationship right and the cream of that relationship is fellowship the way the father rubs himself on us is to prayer the way he relates deeply with us is to prayer with the foundations i've listed The way he empowers us with himself is to prayer. In the upper room, when they receive empowerment, what posture were they? Prayer. On the day of Pentecost, the Holy Ghost came while they were in the upper room, not in the supper room, according to the man of God. Since they were in the upper room, not in the supper room. That means they were in the place of prayer, fellowship, communication. Every time you want to hear God about what step to take this year, um, in, in concerning um, different areas and all that you get into prayer prayer into prayers you know that in the place of prayer there's communication there's fellowship fellowship is sharing hmm? there's sharing hallelujah number two prayer was designed to bring you revelation insight and light malachi prayer was designed to bring you revelation insight and light and light probably one of the greatest benefits of prayer Look up at me, everyone. You know, when I'm about to say something very serious, I tell you to look up at me. Probably one of the greatest benefits of prayer is sight, vision, and revelation. Never forget this as long as you live. 
Remember, I made a statement earlier that the pattern is intercession, instruction, and intervention. Most times, Christians do intercession and wait for intervention. So their ears are closed. Their eyes are closed. They are not even expecting God to show them something. They are not expecting God to say something. Listen to me. Probably one of the greatest benefits of prayer is insights, revelation, and light. That means every time as we begin the fasting tomorrow, 21 days fasting is starting tomorrow. As we begin the fasting and praying and we structure to pray at personal levels and at corporate levels, listen to me, you must expect revelation. You must expect the light to break on you like the noonday sun. You must expect light from heaven. Kalabaya. The way God empowers his people to dominate territory is through light. Light. When there is light, there is dominion. Oh my goodness. There's somebody here. No light, no dominion. No light, no speed. Imagine driving in the night and your headlights are off. How fast can you move? Talk to me somebody. Can you move? Genesis chapter 1, verse 16, I believe. The Bible said, the Lord made two great lights. God made two great lights. He said, the greater light to rule by day and the lesser light to rule by night. Light is connected to ruling. And this light breaks on us, sometimes as instructions, sometimes as a knowing and a knowing and a knowing. You know, but you know that you know that this is what to do. Sometimes, and when we talk about this inside and light, look at it in two forms. Number, I mean, in two forms. Number one, light and insight into God's word, into the ways of the Spirit, the knowledge of eternal things, the knowledge of the things of the Spirit that will guide your affairs in life. Number two, light and insight concerning the work of your hands. Sometimes you go to pray and the Lord will tell you, or you just know suddenly, God, do this thing this way. About the work of your hands. Listen to me. A lot of the harvest, the results. And the domination we expect this year is going to come through these lights. Knowing what to do. The labor of the weary, I mean of the foolish, we every one of them. Knowledge, which is light, that knoweth not how to enter the city. And I've told you until you break forth, you don't assume you know. That's pride. That's pride. Meaning your heart keeps searching. When you pray, you keep listening. As you are praying in the Holy Ghost and fasting and giving, your ears are open. You are expecting God to speak. You are expecting the Lord's glorious voice to be heard. You are expecting him to show you something. And sometimes this scene may come as you are having conversation with people. You know, religious Christians and those who that like to feel deep, the thing is when they hear a voice from heaven, Oh, my daughter Anna, move down outside the gate and check the third gate. There is a man standing there. He shall answer your question. You soon run into troubles. Listen, the light and the knowing sometimes will break forth not when you are praying, but the praying conditions you to receive it. Do you understand? You may be, you may be watching a program on television or news and something will just flash and you say your heart we call it personal recognition system your heart will tell you that this is it this is the answer this is the answer you know you say ah, someone will ask you how do you know I know that I know that I know and when you step out you see supernatural intervention light he made two great light the greater light to rule by day the lesser light to rule by night. Prayer was designed for light to break upon us. For insight and revelation. Habakkuk said, I will set, Habakkuk chapter 2, put it up for me. 
oh he said i will set my watch right i will set me upon the tower to see what he will say to me and what i shall answer when i'm reproved i will stand upon my watch that's the posture of prayer i will stand upon my watch i will set me upon the tower and i will watch to see so when we fast and pray watch to see oh i'm preaching this morning watch to see watch to see easy i will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower so that god can be happy so that i can feel happy that i've prayed i will watch to see what he will say unto me and what i shall answer when i'm reproved and the god speak or not vision he said write the vision god answered and said write the vision make it plain that he may run and read it Isaiah 6 say arise and shine not because you feel like it eh? not because you feel like it for your light has come for your light has come in the place of prayer your light comes you have tried about this business and tried and tried and tried once the light comes you arise and shine that's what they say wow <laughs> glory to God I'm so excited that you tune in to watch a broadcast today thank you for tuning in to watch supernatural shape with dr caris i want to pray for you maybe you are watching and looking at me right now and you have not given your heart to the lord you see christianity is not a religion god is not inviting us to a religion he's inviting us to a relationship and the way to that relationship is to believe that jesus is the son of god he died for your sins and was raised after three days for your justification I want to pray for you. Just a very simple prayer. You say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe that you died for me. I believe that you were raised for me. Today I confess you as my Lord and Savior. Come into my heart. I receive forgiveness of sins. Thank you for saving me. Amen. If you have just prayed that prayer with faith in your heart, you are born again. You are a child of God now. Do well to write to us so that we can give you materials that will help you grow in your newfound faith. Maybe you're watching this and you are sick in your body. One of the things I love to do is to pray for people to get healed, to get breakthroughs, to get deliverance, to receive miracles. I want to pray for you right now. That thing you are trusting God for. The hand of God is upon me to pray for you for a miracle. I pray for you right now. Stretch your hand towards the TV screen. Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray for your people. I pray that your healing power will come upon the ones needing healing. In the name of Jesus, I release miracles, I release breakthroughs, I release the supernatural to them right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, thank you, Lord, for that healing. Thank you, Lord, for that deliverance. Thank you, Lord, for that special touch to that woman, that man, that boy, that girl. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I know you received something. Don't keep quiet about it. Call the numbers on the screen. Write to us. Email us. And I'm sure we know what the Lord has done for you. Until next time, keep living in the supernatural. God bless you. If you were honest, you will be grateful.